This is KCAL News, Los Angeles. Now at four, hold on to your hat. SoCal is in for a wild weather ride. An Arctic blast is moving into the Southland, packed with whipping winds, torrential rain, and rare low level snow as we move through the work week. Right now, we are tracking cold, windy, and snowy conditions across our region, including a rare blizzard warning. From the mountains to the valleys and down to the coast, people are feeling the chill and will be impacted by this dangerous winter storm. Hi everyone, I'm Susie Sa. And I'm Juan Fernandez. Mother Nature is not holding back this time as this shapes up to be the biggest winter storm with the worst of it coming in the next couple of days. That's right, a winter weather advisory is in effect today across our region and we are tracking this rare SoCal weather event. Our reporters have their boots on the ground all across the Southland. But first we begin with our weather team. Olga Ospina starts us off with a look at what's happening right now. Olga. Hi, Susie and Juan, and you said it best. This is a very rare winter event. Wait until you see what we have going on. We actually have a blizzard warning that is going to be impacting parts of Southern California Friday and Saturday. This is extremely unusual for our area, so this is going into effect early Friday until four o'clock on Saturday. That's because we are expecting very heavy snow and very strong gusty winds. So very difficult travel conditions. This includes mountains of LA as well as Ventura, but even out through the Inland Empire, the San Bernardino Riverside County Mountains will also be experiencing those blizzard conditions. Here's a check of our satellite radar. So we are seeing some rain and really the biggest impact at with this storm is going to be the snow, the very low levels. So we are seeing right now now, not too much activity through the I-5. We did have some earlier, but if you take a look out through Santa Clarita, where you see those pinks, that indicates some of that snow, and we are seeing that through some of our valleys, the San Fernando, Santa Clarita Valley, as we head into parts of the Inland Empire as well. Up in the mountains, we are seeing some snow, and uh, Evelyn Taft is going to join us as well to show us exactly what we can expect as we head into the coming days, because Evelyn, I know the snow models yep. are really showing some incredible numbers. It's unbelievable, right, Olga, where we're actually going to see some of that snow, and that's been the talk of the town, really. And as we get a look at the forecast model right here, this is our global forecasting system, the GFS model, showing us snow as we head to the next few days. Once everything is said and done by the end of the weekend, and remember, Friday and Saturday will be our biggest snow days, we're going to end off with numbers like this. The numbers have gone down a little bit as far as totals are concerned, but we're still looking at pretty significant numbers, especially as we head to Wrightwood. Take a look right here. We're looking at almost 30 inches of snow. Big Bear, same thing goes. As we head to Glendora, 21 inches, 4 inches in San Fernando, Simi Valley, a little over an inch in Fraser Park, the northern slopes really getting hit the hardest at 41 inches. We're going to take you through this future cast, show you exactly when and where we're expecting to see more snow and more rain. But for now, Susie Wan, back to you. All right, ladies, thank you. And speaking of snow, snow was already falling this afternoon along the grapevine and much more is on the way. That's right. Drivers should know the CHP could potentially shut down the five freeway. KCAL News reporter Jeff Nguyen is live in Gorman this afternoon where they've already seen some snow. Jeff? Susie and Juan, we had a series of snow flurries out here this afternoon. Some of it still sticking on the ground right now, but the main concern has got to be I-5 and whether it can remain open. Caltrans says that it is staffing crews 24 hours a day in 12-hour shifts through this storm. The snow started coming down in Gorman at around 1 in the afternoon. About an hour earlier, we ran into grapple along the grapevine. Some of it stuck to this jacket and our camera equipment. Hop in your seat. <laughs> Tracy Bentz and her daughters made a last minute run to the library in Fraser Park. They got extra books to hunker down the next few days because more snow is in the forecast for this area. If they close the road, obviously you can't really go anywhere. When the snow sticks to the ground, the concern is what will happen to I-5, which is a major artery between Northern and Southern California. Yesterday, Caltrans applied brine to prevent ice from forming on the roadway and snow 
snow from sticking to the ground. Betsy's husband commutes to Santa Clarita for work. If they close the grapevine, it's really, he can't go. Before the snowfall, we met Archie Corpus and his son Chad at a truck stop in Castaic. They live on the Central Coast in Atascadero, but they went down to Rancho Cucamonga to pick up this RV. Bought it yesterday and then watching the news and watching the local news and stuff, and I know there's going to be some snow at the grapevine, so trying to get it home before the snow comes. Lisa Lowe and her husband John and their two teacup Yorkies are a long haul team. They've endured road closures caused by severe weather in the past, so they had emergency rations in their big rig. We've given water to mommies that uh, have dry formula in their vehicles uh, for that situation. Uh, we carry juice, we carry uh, just whatever we can fit in our refrigerator or underneath our, our bunk or in our side boxes just to help people out. As inviting as the snow might be, people who live in this mountain community say when out-of-towners come up to play in the snow, there's one thing that irks them. People leave in the garbage. I mean, just pick it up. You brought it in, take it with you. Or use a garbage can. There's garbage cans all over here at the park. And for now, it's a wait and see situation as to whether or not the I-5 remains open. Caltrans says that its crews will apply more of its solutions on the roadway to keep it from icing up. And so if you see Caltrans crews out here, make sure you slow down. For now, we are live in Gorman. Jeff Nguyen, KCOW News. Well, the snow is also coming down now in some Inland Empire foothills and with it, dangerous driving conditions in the Cajon Pass. The storm already caused a closure on the 15 freeway near the Nevada border early this morning. KCAL News reporter Jasmine Veal live on the 15 freeway in Devore this afternoon. How's it going out there, Jazz? Well, Juan, it was snowing here. Now it is raining. I mean, just look how wet the freeway is here on the 15. And yes, it is open right now, but it was closed overnight into the morning between Baker and the Nevada state line because of those icy conditions. People have been just trying all day to outrun this storm. Snow began falling across the IE by Wednesday afternoon. It's it's pretty cold, though. Some drivers in the Cajon Pass were trying to get what they needed to get done before the bulk of the storm arrives. I'm staying home. That's why I'm working today. High wind warning signs are posted and snow plows filled with sand are in position on the 15 to deal with the incoming snow and ice. Well, so far, it's been windy, super cold. One man surprised to find what looked like snow pellets on his car. It's like a granule, like salt, but it's not it's not salt. It's 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 um crystallization like snow in the mountains caltrans was stopping drivers on angeles crest highway telling them to chain up well, so bring your chains <laughs> this man was trying to take some students to wrightwood just for the day it feels like winter it's like uh like three months behind it finally caught up snow began falling overnight around lake arrowhead burying the highways in a few inches of snow big berms in big bear lake are about to get bigger and this is what it looked like Wednesday afternoon in Big Bear Lake as the snow continued to fall. Drivers are being warned not to travel during these dangerous and wintry conditions that will last for days. Yeah, and back out here live right along the 15, these low snow levels will make driving very dangerous. So the best thing authorities say, just don't do it. Or if you do, you need to remember to pack the chains, go slowly, and turn on your headlights. Live here in DeVore, Jasmine Beal, KCAL News. You could hear that high winds and high surf causing danger along our coast. The storm isn't just going to clobber the mountains and valleys. It's already hitting the coast. KCAL News reporter Michelle Geely is live this afternoon in Huntington Beach with the conditions there. Michelle? Well, Susie, I don't want to get too personal, but I have had a free teeth cleaning with Huntington Beach sand today. That is how windy it is out here. I thought the wind was dying down within the last hour or so, but it is now kicked right back up again. It is cold. This wind is brutal. 
The wind along the coast blew sand from the beach onto Pacific Coast Highway this afternoon. That's going to be good for our complexion because we're being sandblasted. So. <laughs> These Englishmen on holiday didn't mind the gusts as they walked to the Huntington Beach Pier, tilting forward most of the way. Why don't you wear a jacket? Because I'm not cold. <laughs> I'm used to the winter in England at the moment, so this is lovely. So I'm here down here at the harbor and we can't go out because it's like storm conditions. They put a storm flag up here. Fishing and whale watching boats stayed more to the docks in the Dana Point Harbor because of the windy rough seas. Donna Kalis, who owns Dana Wharf Sport Fishing, shared this video of the stormy situation. Whipping wind on the beach tore through easy ups and volleyball nets. It rolled over trash cans. People cycling, even on electric bikes, had a workout. We're getting gusts today between, you know, 20, 30, 40 knots, right? Depending on uh, the different locations and, and where those gusts are happening. That's as high as 46 miles per hour, strong enough to tear a dock apart today in Newport Harbor. Luckily, the current kept it from floating away. Wind draws a special breed of athlete to the ocean below the cliffs in Huntington Beach and people who love to watch the show. Yeah, just this kite surfer, I guess he's living life on the edge, but um, you know, we just want to see the waves and how it's like here, but it's pretty wild. This kite surfer made the 250 mile trip from Las Vegas to catch as much air as possible. Mission accomplished. In the morning with the car side of forecast, gorgeous, big waves, nice wind, nice weather, California, you know, so it's a little bit, I know, the most I've hated, but I love it. <laughs> Okay, guys, looking out in the ocean here off of the cliffs, it looks as though our German tourist has left the ocean. He's probably headed back to Vegas. That's where he's working for six months. But I see two other brave souls out there, kite surfers and then a wind surfer who's making his way back in. No doubt these guys are having a lot of fun, but it is mucho frio out here. It is cold. That's the latest live in Huntington Beach. I'm Michelle Geely. Back to you. See, Sam and Michelle, yeah. I can see that it is it's cold all. out there. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much. Coming up now, bracing for a treacherous commute. Yeah, what drivers need to know to stay safe while on those slick roadways ahead of the winter wallop. Plus, dodging danger, a trooper is counting his lucky stars after his jaw dropping close call on a snowy highway. And we have seen some incredible images out there. We're just getting started. We still have more snow, more rain, gusty winds and cold temperatures too, even into the weekend. So I will have that full forecast for you next. Breaking news now, police in Hemet are releasing shocking new details after their officers shot and killed a man yesterday. That's right. Assignment editor Mike Rogers is at the desk now. Mike, what are police telling you about the person they shot? Well, Juan and Susie, it's a big development. We now know that the person they shot was not the person that they were there for, but a neighbor of a home. You can see behind me how large the police scene was out there yesterday. We had Arena Nakano out there trying to sort everything out. Unfortunately, we now know that the person was just a neighbor who happened to be in another backyard. I want to take you to some other video from the scene. Hemet police say they were there following up on a theft investigation when they encountered this neighbor in the backyard of a home. They say the neighbor was armed and that's when they shot him. Uh, now that neighbor was then taken to the hospital where unfortunately he died of his injuries. As for the original person that they were looking for, uh, it's still not clear if they ever located that person or if they ever uh, took that person into custody or dealt with that person in any way. But now we know that this neighbor who was in a backyard, we don't believe it to be his backyard, but uh, a neighbor of another backyard uh, was armed in that backyard, and that's when police encountered him. They shot him and ultimately killed him. As we come back out here to the desk, we have reached out to the Riverside Sheriff's Department. They're the ones that have taken over this investigation now. There is some information out there uh, that the neighbor may have alerted police to his presence before he was shot, saying that he was a neighbor. So we've asked Riverside Sheriff uh, for a comment on that. We also have a reporter working on this story tonight. So we're going to bring you any late developments we get on this story as they become available. Susie and Juan. Wow, no wonder it was so confusing yesterday. Absolutely. All right, Mike, yeah. thanks for bringing us up to date. Mm -hmm. Now to this, the man convicted of killing rapper Nipsey Hussle was sentenced today to 60 years to life in prison. Eric Holder didn't react when the sentence was announced in the downtown L.A. courtroom. 
He was convicted last July of shooting Hustle to death outside his South LA clothing store in 2019 after the two men had an argument. The defense wanted the sentence lowered to 25 years, but the judge refused. Charges have now been filed against the man suspected of murdering a local bishop. Prosecutors charged 61 year old Carlos Medina with murder, including a special allegation of the personal use of a firearm. The cameras were not allowed to show him in court. Medina is suspected of shooting Bishop David O'Connell in the Bishop's Hacienda Heights home. Medina had done occasional handyman work for him. Today, investigators said they do not believe O'Connell owed him money. Medina's arraignment was postponed. He's being held on just over $2 million bail. If convicted, Medina could get 35 years to life in prison. The winds were strong enough in Long Beach to blow down a block wall, but that wasn't all. The wind also blew down several trees in the South Bay. KCAL News reporter Rena Nakano live in Manhattan Beach to show us more. Rena. Well, you guys, you know, I have given up on the hairspray because my hair is just out of control today because of these gusts and Manhattan Beach residents here tell me that this is pretty strong. Now, take a look behind me. This area has been cleared out of all of the debris from that tree falling, but take a look. Look at that branch. That is what caused it all. Mother Nature was relentless Tuesday night into Wednesday as trees fell all across Southern California. This eucalyptus toppled across Laurel Avenue and Manhattan Beach, damaging some parked cars. Just a big, loud crash and a boom. Apartment co-owner Chris Petrusky says once the tree on the property gets cut up, he has his work cut out for him, dealing with the aftermath. Definitely a nerve-wracking experience in sunny California. We're not used to weather like this. Meanwhile, in Torrance, for hours, timber blocked the entrance at Providence Little Company of Mary Hospital on Earl Street, and crews were busy clearing out this uprooted pine that blocked all northbound lanes of Hawthorne Boulevard. Down in Long Beach, Jerome Washington says the howling winds kept him up all night. I heard a big noise at uh, maybe like 11 or 12 last night, but I didn't think nothing of it. In the morning, he walked into his backyard to check it out. Tumbleweed branches floating in the pool. But that wasn't it. He discovered he no longer had a back wall, giving everyone along Studebaker Road a clear view of his newly remodeled yard. I think over time, it's just moving, moving, and then it just finally just fell down because there's no rebar. With no rebar, no foundation, or cement inside the blocks, he says it just couldn't handle the strong gusts. He's worried his neighbors, who have the same wall, may be next. In the meantime, he's hoping to get back a little bit of privacy. Hopefully we get something, some tarp up, and get some estimates right away and get this wall back up. And residents we spoke to say, you know, they're not uh, foreign to any sort of wind because they live in this beach community. However, they say these gusts that all of a sudden come towards them, they say they've never seen such strong gusts in all their years of living here. Now, the good thing is they hope that something like this doesn't happen again. Oh, my goodness, my hair pray for me. Uh, live in Manhattan Beach, I'm Rena Nakano. I'll send it back to you. It's all right, Rena. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Roads all across Southern California could be dangerous the next few days, so drivers being warned this afternoon to take it easy out there. Uh, today, we spoke with Elisa Almanzan from Caltrans, and she said, take precautions before the storm, and you don't have to go out. And if you don't have to go out, stay home. Please limit non-essential travel. Again, safety is our number one priority. So look out for our workers. Maintenance crews will increase patrols along state highways, particularly in burn scar areas. Uh, we recommend people to either drive ahead of time, delay your trip if possible. If you have the option to work from home, please do so. And for a look at road conditions at any time, you can check the Caltrans map. We've set up a link on kcalnews.com. Just click Scene on TV. And remember to stay with KCAL News for all of your weather and traffic updates. No snow yet, but Glendora is getting some hail. This video just into our newsroom, it shows hail coming down hard and bouncing off the pathway. And you can tell it's pretty cold out there because it's not immediately melting. Yeah, and just a few minutes away down the 210 freeway in Glendora, a similar story in Laverne, which is getting its fair share of 
detailed this afternoon wow. as well. Mm -hmm. Our next weather team coverage continues on the incoming SoCal storm. Yeah, we begin with Olga Ospina tracking the conditions right now. Olga? Hi, Susie and Juan. Yes, uh, hail, snow, rain, wind, a little bit of everything, and of course, those really cold temperatures. But really, one of the most important things about this storm, it is a very cold system. We're looking at extremely low levels. We rarely see this. Winter weather advisory. This is in place for the Inland Empire. Above 2,000 feet, we could be talking about several inches of snow and potentially even lower than that. We could get down to about 1,000, 1,500 foot elevation. Also, we have the winter weather advisory for places like the Antelope Valley. As we head into the mountains of uh, Big Bear Lake out in Riverside and San Bernardino County, that still continues through Saturday. So just to give you an idea, when we talk about these elevations, here are some of the cities that we are potentially watching. They could get close. Porter Ranch at nearly 1300 foot elevation, 1200 for Santa Clarita. Redlands at over 1300. Hemet at 1600. You could very likely see some snow. Calabasas at nearly 1000 and just over 1000 for Oak Park. So we're watching all these locations very closely and we have team coverage today. Evelyn Taft here on hand as well to take a look at more of what we can expect as we head into the coming days. Uh, yes, Olga, it's incredible how much more snow we are expecting and those snow levels that you just showed incredible. I mean, the fact that we could see snow in some of those neighborhoods like Oak Park, like Calabasas. As we get a look at our future cast right here, you're looking at rain and snow right now. So let's take a look at your future cast. It's set for this hour, the four o'clock hour. Now we've got snow in our local mountains. Snow levels dropping to 2000 feet, as we mentioned. By the time we head into the overnight hours, we could even get down to 1000 feet. Here's the thing, though. We're not going to get a lot of precipitation, so we'll see showers and we'll see snow showers, but nothing too heavy. It does intensify a little bit by tomorrow at 745 AM. Now, by 230 in the afternoon, we're looking at both rain and snow, and we could get some heavy downpours as we head up into our mountain communities. Now a little later in the day we could see more snow develop. Again, snow levels are still very low by tomorrow, but what happens by Friday we have southerly winds coming in. Southerly winds are generally a little warmer. They're going to elevate the snow levels and with that we're not going to see low elevation mountain snow. It'll be about 4,000 feet, but we will start to get very heavy snow at 4,000 feet and above. That's where the blizzard conditions come in. I'll have more details on that and Olga will as well, but for now, I'll send it back to you. All right, Evelyn and Olga, thank you. Ahead, walking a slippery slope, a trooper sees his life flash before his eyes right there along a snowy highway. How he narrowly escaped disaster next. Plus, toxic, toxic packaging, common household products may be putting your health at risk. What to watch out for next. KCAL News is sponsored by the law offices of Jacob Imrani. Now to an extremely close call off a snowy highway. Ooh. Watch a Wyoming Highway Patrol trooper avoid being hit by a careening 18 wheeler by just inches. This terrifying near miss oh. happened on snowy I 80 when the truck's driver lost control and ran off the road, barely missing the trooper. The agency is reminding drivers to move over and slow down. Wow. A major renovation project at Venice High School is now complete. The $162 million project included 28 new general and specialty classrooms, upgrades to the auditorium, renovated outdoor spaces for students, along with landscaping and hardscaping throughout the campus. So modern. Looks good. Nice. <laughs> Coming up at 430, obey the law or mm -hmm. face the consequences. A wake up call to all tobacco manufacturers. The penalty handed down by the FDA that has e-cigarette companies rethinking their strategy. The Antelope Valley expected to get several inches of snow and powerful winds. Today, they got a taste of what's to come. A live report from Lancaster coming up. KCAL News is sponsored by Toyota of Glendora. This is KCAL News, Los Angeles. The cold and wind are already here, and now the rain and snow are moving in. Get ready for some brutal winter conditions for Southern California. 
So what low-lying areas might see some snow in the coming days? Our next weather team is tracking it all for us. Evelyn Taft and Olga Ospina are here now with a look at what's going on out there. We'll begin with Olga. Hi, Juan and Susie. Yes, and you know, the places that could see snow are areas that typically would not expect it. So places like the Santa Clarita Valley, places in the Inland Empire, a lot of snow in the higher elevations. We are talking several feet of snow at the mountain resorts. With that said, though, don't plan on heading out there, at least in the coming days, because it is going to be very dangerous. We have a blizzard warning in place Friday, Saturday. So here's a look. This is where we left off as we continue to see on Thursday we will continue to see that snow and actually as we head into Friday Saturday we will see that rain intensify so we will continue tracking this for you as we head into the coming days you can see that by Friday evening some very heavy rain starting to move in from Ventura into LA County as well all right Olga incredible how much rain how much snow we're expecting and we're going to continue your future cast right here because I want to take you to Saturday Saturday is going to be an interesting day because we have a closed low that's coming in overhead Head. What does that mean? It could mean thunderstorms. It could mean water spouts, maybe tornadic activity at the coast and some serious downpours and thunderstorms. Now, as we head into your 24 hour temperature changes right here, you'll see temperatures continuing to get cooler. We're already 14 degrees cooler in Ontario right now compared to this time yesterday, 10 degrees cooler in Riverside. And of course, we're also keeping our eye on the roads. We've got numerous long duration road closures ahead. Plan on complete shutdown of the I-5 corridor, the grapevine, the Cajon Pass as well. We're going to continue to keep you posted on it all. But for now, Susie Juan, back to you. All right, Evelyn, Olga, thank you. Well, we're already seeing some snow flurries in the Antelope Valley and uh -huh. much more is on the way. That's right. KCAL News reporter Rachel Kim live in Lancaster where people are excited for what's to come. Rachel. <laughs> They certainly are, Juan and Susie. I can tell you that uh, we got less than an hour of light snow earlier this afternoon. No accumulation, though. Right now, you can see behind me, it is all clear, but I can tell you it is frigid out here. According to my phone, it's 42 degrees, but feels like 35 here in Lancaster. Residents here in the Antelope Valley know just how cold and windy it can get up here, but even they are surprised at the cold weather now and what's to come. Just after 2 p.m., flurries fell in downtown Lancaster, where residents welcomed another sign of the incoming storm. The fact that it's snowing, I am really, really excited. I'm like a 33-year-old child. I'm super excited. There was some snow coming down. It was uh, an awesome moment. So I love the snow. Tanya Torres made sure her puppy Clover was prepared for it while they took a walk down the boulevard. Extra sweaters to go out so you don't miss the snow. <laughs> in the Antelope Valley, as many as six inches of snow are expected in the foothills and up to three inches on the valley floor. As for the winds, they'll be whipping, reaching up to 65 miles per hour throughout the week. Did you want it hot, ice, or blended? Let's do it hot. Hot, hot. No surprise, barista Alyssa Crawford is taking a lot of orders for hot drinks in the drive through lane today. She told us how she stayed warm while working outside. I'm layered up. I have leggings on under my pants. I have a long sleeve jacket. I have this big jacket. I have hot hands, so I'm pretty good right now. <laughs> it's just my nose and my face that's cold. Back on the boulevard at Lucky Luke Brewing Company, the outdoor patio is empty and the usual lunch crowd just isn't showing up. It's usually steady. You know, uh, we have seen a dip due to like the the weather you know it rained last night so a lot of people usually don't really want to come out daniel knows with the colder weather coming it's going to take a lot more than their craft food and beer to get business to heat up again uh, so we're trying to like grasp whoever we can you know whether that be like new cocktails that we make new specials that we make and whatnot so trying to get business coming through the doors and despite the inclement weather, several small business owners here along the boulevard tell us that they are hoping that people will come out and support their businesses throughout the week. Just dress up, stay warm, and stay safe out on the roads. Reporting live in Lancaster, Rachel Kim, KCAL News. Rachel, thank you. And as we've been showing you, there are a lot of impacts from this winter storm. That's right. Assignment editor Mike Rogers is monitoring it all from the desk. Mike, what's happening right now that we should know about? Mm -hmm. Juan and Susie, the biggest thing happening here in the valley is these winds bringing uh, down trees as well. I want to show you this video from SkyCal uh, that we were overhead not too long ago. This is a big tree you can see totally uprooted and down in the middle of this neighborhood. Uh, that's been happening a lot, both last night and today. We've seen down tree after down tree. These high winds, these already loose soil that we've had from our recent rains. 
really causing problems here. Now, I want to take you to our next problem. We'll come out to my computer here so I can show you. Up in the mountains, we've already got people trying to go up to the mountains and get a, a hold of some of the snow here, and that's already causing issues. C uh, CHP and Caltrans working with several stuck vehicles uh, that have tried to get up there and have got, gotten themselves stuck in the snow and ice. So they're really asking you, please don't travel up here. You see all the chain control requirements that are already going on. I want to take you to some Caltrans cameras that I've also been monitoring up there. You see on the left, that's the 18 uh, at Lake Gregory Road, and you can see how the roads are already covered in snow there. Those cameras on the right uh, are the 210 freeway at Waterman and the 138 uh, going up towards the mountains there. So even going up into the mountains, we've already got snow sticking on the road, heavy snow sticking on the road in Big Bear, and uh, you can see those other cameras out there in the IE are wet already as well. So we're monitoring all of those things. We're monitoring these vehicles that have become stuck up in Big Bear. Uh, hopefully they're able to get those out, get those people to some warm places tonight. Yeah, let us know, Mike. Thanks. And we'll be here for you throughout the night and the rest of the week on KCAL News as this storm makes its way across the Southland. And we're always on at KCALnews.com. Up next right here, a futuristic diagnosis. How do you feel about robots in the operating room or a doctor's office? The mixed reviews when it comes to AI healthcare. Plus, digging deep beneath the Earth's surface, the stunning new discovery about our planet's innermost layer. The FDA is going after e-cigarette makers it says are selling their products illegally. It issued fines against four companies saying they didn't get the proper authorization to sell their products in the U.S. The FDA says it warned each company, but none complied. So it fined them a maximum of $19,000 for each violation. The companies now have 30 days to pay, settle, request an extension, or request a hearing. Many Americans are apparently not comfortable with artificial intelligence when it comes to health care. And that's according to a new survey by the Pew Research Center. It found 60% of Americans would not be comfortable with doctors relying on AI for their diagnosis, treatment recommendations, and surgeries. And almost 8 in 10 say they do not want AI involved in their mental health care either. But 65% of those surveyed believe using AI to detect skin cancer could improve accuracy of a diagnosis and reduce racial mm. bias. Have you ever wondered what on earth is in the center of our planet? Well, a new study suggests there's a 400 mile wide ball of iron at the center of the earth. Mm. Also, Australian geoscientists now say they can show that the earth has five major layers instead of four. Researchers used seismic data from earthquakes and volcanoes to help make their findings. They believe their discovery could eventually explain some of our planet's oldest mysteries, such as the behavior of the Earth's magnetic field. Oh, a ball of iron. Yeah. Cool. Uh, still ahead, Broadway in Hollywood announcing this season's lineup, a sneak peek behind the curtain of the shows that will light up L.A. stage. Broadway in Hollywood just announcing its new season. Seven shows will take the stage at the Hollywood Pantages Theater. It kicks off with Broadway's most Tony Award winning new show of the season, MJ. It's a look back at Michael Jackson's musical career. Chicago is also back on stage for the first time in eight years. And Mrs. Doubtfire makes his hilarious and touching L.A. debut. And here's the full list of all the shows you can expect this season, including The Wiz, Girl from the North Country, Peter Pan and Company, and you can get immediate access to Les Miserables, but you have to buy a season package. Ooh, great show. Mm -hmm. It's so cold in a Chicago suburb, a pond froze over and a dog broke through the ice oh. and fell into it. There was nothing much its owner or passerbys could do because it was just too dangerous to go in. They called for help as the animal struggled to stay afloat. A firefighter, as you see here, was wearing an exposure suit, jumped in and pulled the dog to safety. It suffered from hypothermia, was taken to the vet and is doing just fine now. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always talking about other places like Illinois getting this kind of weather, yeah. right? Getting the snow and we're never talking about that, but we continue to track this yeah. winter storm incoming to uh -huh. all across Southern California. Olga Spin is here now to show us exactly when that heavy rain mm -hmm. and snow will hit. Olga? Yes, hi, Susie and Juan. And it's kind of, um, 
exciting for us to get, of course, uh, snow where we typically don't see it. But also keep in mind, this is very dangerous weather. If you're traveling through those mountain passes, you are going to encounter some very treacherous conditions. Want to show you the last time that snow was measured in some areas that typically don't see snow, but potentially could be seeing it this time around. Santa Clarita Valley, that was back in 2011 for the San Fernando Valley in 1989 and for downtown Los Angeles all the way back to 1962. So we're going to be tracking a lot of those areas. Areas. Want to show you once again that future cast and what we can expect. We're going to continue with that snow, low elevation snow as we head into tomorrow. And then as we head into Friday, Saturday, we'll get more in the intensity as far as that rain with some pockets of heavy rain. In fact, we have flood watches that are going to be going into effect as well. And we have a blizzard warning that is for mountains of LA and Ventura as we head into Friday and Saturday. So here's a look at the main winter storm potentials. Temperatures dropping 20 to 30 degrees below normal. We've already been feeling that significant snowfall all the way from the foothills to the high desert and mountain areas. Those highest resorts could be talking several feet of snow and that snow possible even across some of the valleys, the coastal hills and the metro suburbs. So we're going to be tracking that very closely as we head into the next several days. Our future cast showing us again this storm moving through impacting us. This is a multi day event into Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The best day if you want to make some outdoor plans that is going to be on Sunday and even early in the day on Monday because then believe it or not, we have another storm headed our way and that could impact us once again as we head into the early part of next week. Look at these temperatures below average for all of us. 40s on third, Thursday and Friday. Those are going to be the coldest days, but then still just in the 50s, still as we continue into the middle of next week. For the valleys, we're also looking at very frigid temperatures. Look at those overnight lows. We're pretty close to freezing for a lot of areas. Beaches, high surf advisory in place. High desert, we're still experiencing those gusty winds. Snow showers likely for places like the Antelope Valley. And of course, really some dangerous conditions out through the mountains that are expecting to see more snow just with this storm into Saturday than we see all season. So these are really incredible numbers, you guys. Yeah, they really are. Olga, yep. thank you so much. The NBA All-Star break has come to a close with play set to resume tomorrow. Sports director Jim Hill is here now with more. Jim? There's more news ahead just moments away on KCAL News at 5. Pat Harvey joins us with a preview. Pat? Hi there, Juan and Susie. Ahead at the top of the hour, we are on Stormwatch and we're tracking the blizzard warning for the Southland Mountains, Mount Baldy, expecting so much snow the ski resort was forced to close down. Plus the cold putting your plants at risk, how to keep them from freezing. All that and much more ahead on KCAL News at 5 on CBS Los Angeles. Now Susie Wan, back to you. Pat, thank you. So to come here, a newlywed rescue. Yeah, an unforgettable wedding day for one bride and groom, but not for the obvious reasons. The predicament they found themselves in after saying, I do. We got up maybe five feet and then boom, doors kind of stuck. Then the door started to open. And so I could see like the concrete wall right in front of me and I could see the concrete wall behind me. I was like, that's not normal. So give me two pulls. Well, this isn't exactly what a couple from North Carolina had in mind when they got married over the weekend. The bride, the groom, and the wedding party got stuck inside an elevator and they had to be rescued. Panav and Victoria Ja had just wrapped up their ceremony and were on their way to the reception on the 16th floor at a uh -oh. hotel. But as you saw, it didn't exactly go as planned. They didn't get a lot of help there. <laughs> Instead of wedding bells, they heard the voices of those firefighters four stories above them setting up for the rescue. Oh. It took crews about two and a half hours to hoist all six people through the top of the elevator. Thank goodness they made out okay. Mm -hmm. The first marriage challenge, right? Indeed. We got through that one. They were successful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching KCAL News at 4. Our next newscast just moments away on KCAL News at 5 on CBS. And we're always on KCALnews.com and streaming on CBS Los Angeles. We'll see you again tonight for more news on KCAL News at 8, 9, and 10. See you later. What?